What's going on, YouTube, man? It's sad to bring this uh, sad news, man. Our beloved sister, Regina King, lost her only child, Ian Alexander. I think it's like, yeah, Ian Alexander Jr. Uh, now, from what they, from reports saying that it was a parent suicide. And, you know, I guess that's how they found the young man. But it's just a sad situation, man, for any parent to uh, to go through. You know, and man, my condolences go out to her family. My condolences go out to to the friends, the fans, what whoever else is affected by it. And um, I always tell people, man, you never know what people are going through. You know, people can have it all. We can have all the money in the world. We can have all the cars in the world. We can live in the nicest house and everything like that. But it's always gonna be something that bothers us in our mental health. You know, uh, mental health is real. Um, even drug use is real. You know, drug use can cause mental health. You know, I don't know how the brother died. I'm just, just putting in the um, reality um, category. Uh, I knew a couple of people that committed suicide throughout my life, man. It was like a tough thing for me to have to deal with, you know, um, even just dealing with friends that committed suicide. Like I had a friend of mine, I'm 39, so it was like back in 2007. Yeah, seven. I, this was around like 9 11 and stuff like that. Like, little years after 9 11, we was at war with Iraq and stuff like that, or Afghanistan, one of them countries. But he was in the military and they deployed him out and um, he was gone for about maybe two or three years, something like that. And he came back, just his mind was gone. You know, he was suffering from PTSD. He was suffering from a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. Uh, I remember he was very, 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 like, had bad insomnia. And I remember, man, it was a few times where he used to call me. And I keep, man, I'm young, man. I'm in my 20s, but I still had that spirit and that heart to listen, you know, and to still give advice. Even though I was young, didn't know no better like I know now. But even then, I just always wanted to be that voice he can um, talk to. But, man, I remember those times where he'll call me and say, man, I can't think. You know, when I said, what you mean you can't think? You know, I can't think, man. You know, I keep seeing stuff. I keep hearing stuff. I, every time... My girl move in the bed, you know, I'm thinking something about to happen to me. I think she's about to attack me. And thank God he wasn't violent. Like, he never got violent towards his family, girlfriend, or whatever. But he was having issues, man. I remember we took him to, uh, it's a mental institution in in Mississippi, outside of Jackson College, uh, Whitfield. I remember we took him to Whitfield, you know, try to give him some mental help or whatever. Uh, then when they put him in therapy, then they put him on medication. But I remember, man, even during those times, man, he'll call me like, B, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. And I tell him, like, man, you can't do it, bro. Like, you can't. But not realizing at a young age on what this man is going through. You know, I'm older now, so I understand, like, how war affects the mind. How just being deployed for a long time and it affects the mind. You know, and it messed him up real bad, man. And I remember leading up before he, you know, to his death or whatever, man, I remember him reaching out to me and we had like a, a good conversation, man. I remember the conversation about uh ENL barbecue. Uh ENL is a uh barbecue spot in Jackson, Mississippi called ENL Barbecue. And he was talking about uh we're gonna get something that next week when he get paid or whatever. And I said, All right, bet we're gonna get something to eat. Then he'll just tell me about you know, he was telling about even then about his therapy and about still he's still having night terrors and stuff like that and the medications, you know, kind of make him zombied out. And uh, that was the last time I talked to him, you know, uh, D, man. D was a cool dude, man. And uh, they say when he took his life, uh, damn, they say when he took his life, he was at peace, you know, they say his face didn't look stressed out. Uh, he overdosed, you know, he took a bunch of medication and, um, you know, took his life. And uh, I just remember his mother and father, man, was, was very devastated, man. And, and, you know, I remember his father told me, like, man, he said, I can deal with, you know, car wreck, you know, him dying of a sickness. Um, even somebody killing him, he said, he said, even by somebody killing my son, you know, I can seek revenge. I can do this or my son is sick. 
I can understand, I can cope with that, or accident, car accident. He said, but him killing himself, he said that t that told me a be that told me a man, and and he said I couldn't save my son. When he said that, he said as a father, I couldn't save my son. He said, yeah, I can revenge my son's death. I can get all the money I can to at least try to help my son. But he said, man, he said, I just feel helpless. You know, I feel hopeless without that I couldn't protect my son from his mind, his own thoughts. And when he said that, man, at a young, even then, back then, it kind of just put things in perspective for me. Um, a love a parent has for their child. And just to see a man, and his dad was a strong man too, man. Good father too, man. Good black father. And um, he gave that boy a lot of knowledge, man. I remember growing up, man, his dad used to have us out there cutting grass. I'm talking about at 5 in the morning on a Saturday morning. We ain't looking at no cartoon, man. We was out there in that yard, man. And they had a big-ass backyard too. God damn, that yard was big as hell. But I remember at the funeral, though, how everybody was saying good things about him. Uh, how he was a jokester and all the other stuff, man. And his home going was was uh, what he would want, you know. We would. I was sad because I just knew what what type of person he would have been if he would have survived and lived to this day. You know, we missed out on a good brother, but man, I know Regina going through it right now, man, dealing with the death of her son. I know it's tough, man, especially your only child. I'm my mother's only child, so I can only imagine how my mother would feel if I was to take my own life and, and go like that. But sometimes, man, we don't know what people going through, man. We see him, his mother, Regina King, movie star. His dad is a, I think he was a music producer or something. And he's in the limelight, you know. He got all this money. He living like this. He moving like this. But sometimes, man, money don't make you happy. Money can't make you happy. Fame don't make you happy. There's nothing. There's not. There's no telling what internally that young man was going through, you know. And for him to commit suicide like that, man, I just hate it for his mother. I ain't gonna lie. I hate it for his father. I hate it for for the both for parents in general. Um, tell him, man, when my friend committed suicide, man, that shit kind of like changed me. Like real talk, it made me more appreciative to life. It made me more cautious on how I move. Uh, even when I'm down and out, because uh, I have thought about suicide also before. I thought about it before. I remember. I'm. I'm forget. I'm. I'm on the road now. So, but I remember um, in 2007, my child's mother left me, and I end up having custody of my son. You know, my son would live with me. So, I'm about 24, 25, and uh, I remember. I was going through it, you know, after she left. Now, I was hurt, you know, when she left, but that wasn't the cause of the suicide, though. But it just started right there, you know, because at the time, I just started working. I got my own place, taking care of her, paying all the bills, uh, just doing everything that a man's supposed to do in a relationship. But me, it was on me. It was my fault. I didn't know how to be a man of the house or nothing like because i was young that was my first time living with a woman unmarried you know that's why i always tell young men just get married man but i don't even think marriage would have i probably would still fail the relationship if i was married or not but it was so so much on me uh me not knowing how to do but that's that's here or there so anyway when she left i remember i was down for two weeks uh you know how i did heartbreak down for two weeks whatever cool right so now i got my little baby now my son about seven eight months old cool man but after that everything just started going downhill man i lost my job uh the apartment i was living in i about to get evicted after a certain length of time i about to get my car repossessed it was just everything was just falling for me man that i never experienced before now my family helped me you know and i think one of the things that was bothering me the most was I had to ask my dad, my mom to help me, you know, which they did never mind, man. They never made me feel bad about it, but just me as a man, as a father to my kid, you know, I wanted to be there because keep I had a daughter too, you know, but I have two different mothers. But I had a daughter too, so I was going through that, man, and uh, then I'm going to tell you, oh, well, that's another story, I'm going to have to say that, but, man, then I went through another situation with some chicks, man, because at that time, I didn't have dick discipline. You know, I wasn't disciplined with my dick, so I was wilding, man. But anyway, make the long story short, 
I couldn't find a job. I couldn't find nothing. Uh, everything was falling for me. Uh, I was going then. Then during this time, I also going to court to get documents saying that to get custody of my child too, because at the time we was going back and forth. I think that was the stress level right there. Like me, me worried about is I'm gonna get custody of my son. You know, even though I knew I was, but it was just that thought like I probably wasn't because. I always heard like what well, women get the child or whatever like that, but just going through that process, man, and just stressing and and then, then still dealing with what I'm dealing with, uh, trying to look for a job, make sure my son eat every day, uh, days that I didn't eat, you know, make sure my little boy was was eating. I remember I probably had like three dollars, right? I go to Dollar General or something. We got Dollar General down here. I remember I used to go to Dollar General and get my son one of these. Uh, it's these microwavable little cut things, you know what I'm saying? You can microwave, it got like little me like something like Chef Boyard. I remember I used to get them there. I make sure I gave them water, just little stuff like that. And I have uh baby food or whatever like that. But just during that time I'm still learning. I'm still learning as a father. I'm just processing this as a man. I got a little baby, all oh, baby. So but I had the milk, I had everything like that, but just little food. And I remember I used to eat noodles. I never ate noodles growing up as a kid. I didn't grow up with noodles. But anyway, but going through that, man, you know, I remember it's this bridge called the Stack in Jackson. You know, it goes, it's curved. I don't know why everybody's scared of that bridge, but anyway. But, man, I remember I had a, a Buick Roadmaster. And uh, it was like 12 o'clock that afternoon. So I drive up on the highway, pull to the side of the median on the on the bridge. Now the bridge going going up like this, so my car like on the side, of my car still can go through. So I called my boy. I said, "Hey man, I'm finna end my life. I'm I'm kind of like not crying on the phone, but just just letting them know, like, man, I appreciate da 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 da." That motherfucker said, "Jump, do it. Like you doing all that? Why you calling me for? Jump, do it, do it. Kill yourself, kill yourself." So I got mad. I said, "What? Why are you telling me to jump for? Because I'm, I was expecting him to talk me off the bridge. I would tell you, I was expecting him to tell him, like Brian, don't do it. Da 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 da. I was, I was expecting my nigga to give me some grief or give me some, some guidance or something like that. That nigga like jump, do it, do it, do it then, do it then. That way he kept saying, well, do it then. Cause I can, but as he was saying, I could tell he was crying. Not, you know how." Like, he was in pain hearing me talking about I want to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? That I'm about to jump off this bridge and da-da-da-da, I can't take it. So I'm mad at him. I'm like, what? What you mean? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nigga, you ain't supposed to say that to me. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was looking. So after he said that, and I hung up the phone, I was mad. I'm like, man, fuck him. You know, I'm mad. And I thought about it. I said, if I really did want to do it, I would have killed myself. And number two, I was so mad at him. I was thinking of what I won't call him about, cuss him out about, but that moment, it gave me a split second. Number one, I wasn't strong enough to kill myself. <laughs> I wasn't about that lie. I probably didn't even did this shit. And number two, I thank him for that, you know, just for even saying that. So, but anyway, made a long story short, I asked him about it. I said, why you do that? I said, what if I would have jumped? He said, man, I probably would have jumped behind you then, brother, because knowing I, he said, because I would have been the one, then I would have felt like I, I killed you or whatever, so. You know, that's how it was, man. But, but yeah, man, to all parents that that went through a traumatic situation like that with your children, man, my condolences to you. I know how. I, I, I never experienced with my kids, but even with my children, I ask them every day, like, you okay mentally? How was your day? And, some, and my kids always say, what's good? Like, then I always say, what's good? Like, what's good? Like, tell me something. Tell me what's going on. So if you do... You know, something do happen with yourself. You do inflict pain on yourself. At least I know why. At least I know why what happened. At least, and I'm not stuck like like most people in this world not knowing why their child took their life. And I don't want my kids to do that, man. I, I try to have an open door policy for my children that they can come to me and talk to me. I try not to berate them. I try not to uh, make them feel small because I know this world is very cruel. And I want my kids to come home in a safe space. You see what I'm saying? So I'm thankful that my daughter can come to me and talk to me about boys. I'm thankful my son can talk to me about what's bothering him with peer pressure and stuff like that. I'm thankful that I can talk to them 
You know, I know there's certain things my kids ain't going to tell me, but that deep stuff, I put it on them. And they think I'm crazy when I say that. I was like, listen, I don't want y'all to, I don't want to find y'all hanging from the ceiling and me not knowing why. You see what I'm saying? So, but anyway, uh, once again, condolences to the family. Uh, love each other, man. Uh, if you got family member or kids, man, just pay attention to their behavior, man. I just, sometimes we can't, but anyway, y'all be safe. Love y'all.